Let, let's continue this conversation around the opening of schools. What challenges are these schools facing? And are they ready to accept learners at least on a full-time basis? Joining me now is the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education, uh, Bongiwe Mbimo. Uh, Gigaba, who joins us uh, from Cape Town. You lead the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education, Ms. Mbimo Gigaba. Firstly, do you think that it was a responsible step by the Basic Education Department to say all primary school learners from grade uh, zero, perhaps, all the way to grade seven must go back to school on a full-time basis? Was this carefully thought through, in your view? Hi, morning, um, Botoli and the viewers at home. Look, we have supported um, the, 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 the initiative of the department to want to get everybody at school. And um, we believe that was the well thought um, decision. Remember, the presentations we received as the portfolio committee was that those learners uh, from grade um, zero to grade seven are not um, likely to be affected. And based on that, we had agreed that they can resume um, allowing everybody in August um, to go back to school. Mm -hmm. But with protocols now of, um, of, of COVID, like we know them, the issues of social distancing and uh, how overcrowded our schools are, um, it, 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 it's, it's not realistic because the reports also that we are getting now is that in all provinces, it's not 100% return that has actually, um, 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 it, that, that has actually been allowed to be at school as we are, as we are of, of today. Well, I can tell you just some of the feedback from uh, two principals that uh, we have just had a conversation with one of them, an acting principal in a school here in Gauteng, saying that the department has no clue actually of what is going on on the ground. Uh, this was not properly thought through and it's primarily because they don't know what is happening on the ground. The classes are too overcrowded. Uh, day two of schooling for these learners in her particular school, they have had to be moved to almost uh, examination centers, I think she said. Mm. That, that tells you that the department may not have a clear idea of what the situation is on the ground. So do you still maintain that this was carefully thought through? Look, Tolly, I I am not going really to 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 speak for the department here because I think department before they could take any decision they would make um, 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 a decision based on the reports they get from provinces, and like I am saying, not hundred not all schools would actually be able to to get all learners uh, in, in 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 schools, and I think the principal that you basically should have spoken to is one of those principles that has got overcrowding in her school. Mm. So that is a fact, hence I'm saying, hence I've said myself as well, that there are those issues that you cannot run away, that there is issue of overcrowding in our schools. So in cases of those schools, I agree with her that then the plan was not para. I agree with her that it was not planned um, because obviously for schools like that, you need to get some sort of even mobile schools there will be an issue of um, social distances that you cannot run away from. Mm. So it's either you platoon, which, which means you will allow everybody to go to school, but also to do that, you need a thorough planning because you would need more teachers to do that. So I would agree to her, and, 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 to some, with, I mean with her to some extent, because that is the reality. There are schools like that, and in all nine provinces, that is the reality. Yeah, well... Yours as the portfolio committee is to provide oversight. Have you been on the ground? What have you seen? And importantly, what do you suggest should be the solution? Look, we have not been on the, 
on the ground except individual members that are on their constituencies attending and um, their constituency oversight. We are now actually, in, as I'm with you now, we are in the meeting with the department and particularly Gauteng and, 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 and KZN. We are going to be on oversight from next week in most provinces to see what is happening on the ground. And based on what we can see is happening on the ground, it's when, when we meet with the department, we'll tell them if what we see confirms what, pro, what, for, what for instance, the, 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 the principal has said to you, that is what we would recommend, that probably they need to recheck their, um, their decisions. Yeah. Well, there also is the difficult problem for the department in that while they try to do this difficult balancing act, they're also trying to keep children at school or in schools. 400 to 500,000 students who are now understandably uh, dropped out, as is reported uh, to the nation by the Department of Basic Education. That is a very, very uh, grave issue. In your view, how should that be sorted out? And how do you get these pupils back in class, importantly, the ones who've now dropped out completely? Yeah, you know, it's one thing that we have raised with, um, with the DG in particular and, and, and the department. This COVID has costed the sector um, very seriously. And I think it's something that we need to raise um, to raise with our society as well, because schooling should be an issue that binds both the, the, the teachers, but also the parents uh, in large, you know. Parents must be able to, 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 to encourage their learners to, to, to go back to school. One of the realities which, in my view, I think might have been an issue and it has affected um, um, uh, most, of the, most of the learners, there has been a serious regress. I mean, as a parent as well, I have seen it in my own children. Mm. And I think it has discouraged and it has made many learners to be uh, in a state of discomfort to go back to, to school. That's why they have decided or resorted rather um, to go back um, to, to school. But what we encourage that uh, our parents should be more encouraging in their, in their, we understand also most of the households are child-headed households. Mm -hmm. Most of the households, parents are not there, they are working. And particularly in this pandemic, most parents even lost their jobs, they had to leave. So there are those um, situations that nobody really can do nothing about. But the number of people that has dropped out, I agree with you. It's big, it's huge, but it needs all people, all hands on deck to work together to make sure that we are able to bring our learners back to school. This issue of dropout is a serious problem of TP, and I must say, because we cannot account as a country where are those learners. Mm. And in situations like these unrest that were happening in the two provinces, which is KZN and Gauteng, you actually try to, to follow and see that that's where they are. They are laundering in the streets, they are, they are waiting for anything to happen that would make them busy, criminality or not criminality, but they are available to do such things. So those are our dropouts. Those are the people that we must have roadshows, try to bring them back to a class. Yeah, it is a, a tough one indeed. We are going to have to uh, leave it there. That's uh, Bongi Wembingo. Uh, Gigaba, she is uh, the chairperson of uh, the Portfolio Committee on Basic Education. She, she sits uh, in Parliament. It's a, it's a tough one. It's really a difficult one.